Welcome to the July 2025, 20, July 25th, 2024 meeting of the Raleigh Historic Development Commission's Certificate of Appropriateness Committee. Uh, my name is Wes Tripp. I'm chair of the committee. Um, at this time, I'll recognize my uh, fellow commissioners to introduce themselves. We'll start with uh, Mr. Allen and then work our way down. Okay. Um, good evening. I'm Rob Allen. I'm a resident of the Boylan Heights Historic District and work uh, with an architecture firm locally doing mostly commercial projects. I'm Lauren Woodard. I'm a resident of Raleigh since 2011, and I'm an architect here um, working mostly in institutional work, but previously working in luxury residential. Again, my name is Wes Tripp. I am chair of this committee. I'm a local attorney here in Raleigh. I'm Jordan Ryland. Uh, I'm a local architect and a Raleigh resident of 15 years. And I'll recognize staff now to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Colette Kinane. I have been with the city of Raleigh for six years and I have a master's degree in historic preservation. Good evening, I'm Erin Morton Pugh. I've been with the city four years now and also have a master's in historic preservation. And also Ms. Hill. Uh, Catherine Hill, I'm the attorney for the board. And now I'll allow Ms. Coons to introduce herself. Tracy Coons, resident of Glenwood, Brooklyn, historic neighborhood and work in the building materials business. Again, welcome everyone. Um, the COA committee is a quasi-judicial body uh, governed by North Carolina General Statutes and the city's Unified Development Ordinance. We are authorized to hear requests for certificates of appropriateness, which is why uh, you all are here today. Um, first, we have some housekeeping to take care of, and I should have opened the agenda. Here we go. Um, uh, the agenda as published is before the committee. Um, I'll take a motion to uh, approve the uh, agenda as published. So moved. Is seconded. It, um, it's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. At uh, this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the June 27, 2024 uh, committee meeting. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, staff, any minor works um, approved in the last month? We approved two minor works this month. All right, thank you. All right, we are now ready to proceed with our uh, cases. Uh, in hearing cases, the committee conducts a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearing. That means this is like a court hearing. Uh, state law sets specific procedures and rules concerning how this committee must make its decisions. These rules are different from some other types of land use decisions like rezoning cases, which are legislative in nature. This committee's decisions are constrained by the standard of review set forth in state law and the Unified Development Ordinance and the facts presented at today's hearings. The committee hears and considers evidence presented at the hearing and applies the standard set forth in state law and the city ordinance. The committee must base its decision upon competent material and substantial evidence presented at the hearing. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standard and not personal preference or opinion. Participation is limited, but this meeting is open to the public and everyone is welcome to watch. Parties have rights to participate fully. Parties may present evidence, call witnesses, and make legal arguments. Witnesses may testify as to facts to which they are competent to testify, so long as those facts relate to the legal standard. In addition, lay or non-expert witness testimony is limited to facts and not opinions. For certain topics, the committee needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. Those topics include projections about impacts on property values and projections about impacts on traffic safety. Right, we will now uh, conduct the evidentiary hearings on today's agenda. Uh, the first case up for hearing is COA 55-2024. 1102 Glenwood Avenue. I'll ask that the owners and anyone who will be presenting on this case please come forward. If, uh, oh yes, there you are. Please come forward. Um, here. What's that? Right, right here? Yes, right there. Go ahead and please uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll be brief. Let me put some stuff down. So, um, so uh, first start, I need you to introduce yourself. Oh, um, my name is Jeffrey Scott Taylor. Are you, are you the uh, property owner? I'm the property owner, uh, yeah, so I'm property owner, I'm a retired architect, and I'm a, the contractor also, all okay. in one, I'll kind of talk about that. All right, great, hold on just a second. Yeah. I need to swear in staff before they make yeah. their presentation, and then I'll turn things over to you. Great. All right, staff, you please raise your right hand. 
You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide on today's cases is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, staff will make their presentation uh, brief, and, uh, and then you'll have the floor uh, to talk. Great. All right. So this is case COA 55 2024 at 1102 Glenwood Avenue in the Glenwood Brooklyn Historic District. The request is to remove an existing rear addition, construct a new one and a half story rear addition and construct two side dormers. Um, as a reminder, this is a street side historic overlay district. Um, so the addition itself is only in COA review tonight because this is a corner lot, which you can see in the um, map image here. Uh, so this is a view of the existing house from Glenwood Avenue at the corner of Washington Street. Um, front elevation and a view as best we could get on the north side uh, and then the street facing south side along Washington and attempts at views of the, uh, one of the roof elevations where the dormers are proposed and moving around toward the back of the lot. This is the existing one-story addition that'll be taken down and a view from the rear alley. Um, this ADU in the back uh, was situated in such a way that it's in a zone that's not under review. So just look past that and focus on the main house. Uh, and a view from further out uh, beyond the alley. So summary of staff concerns are the proposed South Dormer's visibility roof form and an atypical extension toward the rear. Um, the removal of character defining original bracket details on the rear. The overall discernibility of the addition from the original contributing building, um, which includes replicating those bracket details on the back of the new addition and um, some atypical metal roofing specifications. Um, and we have basically the entire application is here in presentation form. There's no new information here, but it's available for scrolling and viewing. Um, and Mr. Taylor is prepared to, to speak and answer questions. All right, Mr. Taylor, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, and you should be able to just scroll that wheel as oh, needed. Yeah. Of course, I get my laptop in front because I will put some notes. And I Mr. Taylor, before you begin, I forgot I need to swear you in as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, so please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, it is. Right. Thank you. Getting used to the formality part of it. Uh, so I will, let me, uh, well, maybe at best I can go to the photos here just to kind of walk you through. Um, well, and some of you read the, the materials. So this is after some, I, I purchased this house a couple of years ago and, and uh, getting into the detail of historic discovery kind of mm -hmm. determined that it's a Sears Winona home uh, and there was a trust deed signed, which is basically a, a purchase agreement with a design build contract and mortgage all rolled into one. Uh, the agreement was signed in October of 1919, which is interesting. So I refer to the Sears Winona catalog from 1919 to get a lot of this information. So uh, basically, it's a fairly intact version. There have been some modifications, uh, and I'll hold off the rear for a second, but it's pretty intact with the five part gable brackets. Uh, in the front and back, as well as um, kind of fly rafters, you know, deep projections like 30 inch on the rake and the eave side, um, exposed rafter tails. And we'll come back later, but I think this 5V metal roof is uh, original on the front porch, which we'll get later into in terms of the rear. But uh, I, I would say kind of as a, um, just, I, I won't belabor the back, my background, but I was a corporate architect doing retail construction, um, responsible for over 15,000 stores around the world. But I think what's relevant, more relevant here is, and I used to call it in, when I was uh, working a, a, an occupational hazard, 
So between my wife and I, we've built, designed, built, or remodeled about 15 homes. Uh, some in Boston, some in Columbus, where we were 31 years. Uh, interestingly, uh, one in Raleigh, uh, 308 West Whitaker, was an expansion off the back. Uh, and then we've got a condo now in Durham, so also a historic property. So I think uh, for me, um, it kind of, um, jokingly calling an occupational hazard, but I've always loved the challenges and the problem solving needed for historic properties. Like how do you make it relevant for today, but um, kind of uh, honoring and, um, you know, respecting the, the history, but making it better to, to meet today's standards. So uh, certainly I'm um, having the house for a couple of years in the Glenwood Brooklyn street side historic district, uh, as well as kind of rereading the design guidelines for hist uh, Raleigh historic districts. Um, also as a, uh, I'm now a um, licensed uh, contractor residential contractor, uh, did that for that uh, ADU in the rear, but certainly mindful of the uh, North Carolina residential code, particularly life safety related issues that all kind of come into play. So, um, it, you know, as a kind of lover of prob you know, kind of problems, you know, I specifically for this one, um, it's, uh, you know, 880 square foot, two bedroom, one bath, house, you know, bungalow. Um, I think the catalog notes it as a classy cottage, which is kind of interesting. But, you know, kind of, you know, much like the ADU, kind of how do I, I'm, I'm respectful of the need for housing, particularly for families. So, you know, putting my designer hat on, how do I, a, a mixture of reaching into the history of Sears, Kit Holmes, the Winona in particular, but also kind of my appreciation for craftsman architecture kind of led me to a lot of this. So if, if I could, I, I'd like to break this down, break the challenge down into, um, let's see, a, a couple of you know, chunks. So I'm gonna make sure I can scroll this properly. I may be talking about the site. So the existing site, you can see the, the placement of the ADU in the rear. And a couple of things, of, of course, the um, property line, the frontage is about 25, sorry, 45 feet on Glenwood, but it narrows to 21 and a half feet at the rear alley. So it kind of pinches down. So the Washington Street, Washington Street setback is currently eight and a half feet. You know, I know that's slightly within the normal. So, um, and as, as well as on the north side property line, it's 2.8 feet, you know, and, and the set, normal setback's five feet. So part of um, my, the first step was, if I wanted to expand, is how do I get, let me uh, scroll through, how do I um, cleverly get a stair up to the second floor of the current attic without disrupting the envelope. So for that, I mean, this, let me scroll through existing. Um, so everything, by the way, everything for the uh, existing plan with the exception of the kitchen, which isn't really original anymore and undersized, is I wanted to retain all of that without having to disrupt any of the, I mean, the some of the, I mean, actually all of the original components are still there, which is kind of cool. Uh, but if I can quickly go through the existing and get to the, well, here's, here's the plan view of the addition in the rear before I get to that. So the first step, uh, if you can ignore the kitchen expansion for a minute and that stair, that stair up winder is basically takes up about half of the existing kitchen, but it winds up so that the, at the top landing that you don't see on this, it aligns with the ridge of the house. So that stair can, you know, um, not touch the existing envelope because I knew, um, you know, that was kind of the first step, you know, where, where to locate the stair. And then 
in addition, I, I was able to tuck in a basement stair that wraps underneath that where there's no uh, current internal stair. So that's, uh, let me get to my notes. And then the second, you know, the second piece is the small addition to the rear. So if you remember the site plan, I, I was sort of limited to how far I could, exp you know, um, I, I um, set it back a foot, like about a foot nine in order to maintain the eight foot six. You can see right here, to keep that eight foot six setback off of Washington Street. And then I've got a four foot four setback to basically balance it uh, on the north side that also happens to be aligned with the, the kind of crappy addition that happened sometime later that we'll get to. So my goal was to not, you know, to, to expand as minimally as possible. And that's what led to um, the small addition. So maybe talking a little bit more around the details. So I did kind of do a deep dive into the Winona, as I mentioned before. You know, apparently there are seven versions. Uh, most of them, the alternatives were to expand the house to the rear. Now, specifically, um, you know, so it was extended. It kept the same uh, gable brackets. Now, literally, it expanded at the same 24-foot width. So I, I sort of thought I shouldn't propose that because it would encroach even further into Washington Street, and that would not be desirable. But I, I kept many of the elements, like um, keeping the five-part brackets, uh, all of the horizontal banding, the 30-inch um, uh, overhang of the fly rafters and the rafter tails, you know, just to kind of like in the spirit of how it was built before. Um, but I took some liberties kind of putting my designer hat on and uh, let me go to the, oh, that's, sorry, that's existing. And I'll, I'll focus on the addition first. So the rear, it's better, um, let me show the Washington Street side elevation. So this is, you can see down at the bottom that 10 foot eight, you know, the new addition, the little note at the bottom of the drawing. But, uh, so this is where you can see, as I mentioned before, um, kind of repeating some of the same details of the original. But then if you look at the rear elevation, I introduced this, uh, small shed roof with five piece brackets that was it was a borrow from two other Winona kit homes uh, in the Craftsman style. I thought that was a very nice way to um, provide cover for a wood door, but also, you know, it, it felt like it was in keeping with the scale of the house. Um, let's see if there's anything else about the addition. Uh, I, I did, sorry. My uh, laptop timed out. Let's see. Oh, and, and I did, I did, um, and I know staff kind of made note of this that the um, the design guidelines suggest that any addition be differentiated from the historic, differentiated to uh, be distinct from the the character of the original building. So uh, I did, I didn't, I didn't draw it, but I, I kind of doodled. I, I felt that anything, let's say for example, if I remove the gable brackets, then I have no way to support the 30 inch overhang. And then therefore I would have to reduce the uh, overhang. And then in combination of just, you know, whether or not, um, I would need to, you know, remove the horizontal banding. It, it all added up to me as just kind of cheapening it. So, kind of intellectually, I, I understand that premise. I know you guys didn't write the write the guidelines, but it was just it felt like, in combination of all of the things, I, it would be a mistake, you know, design wise to not, you know, uh, honor the original details. So that that's kind of what I what kind of maybe summing up how I got to the solution. Uh, 
is a little bit of a sidebar. I did, in, inside, I had a few steps down, um, like maybe 30 inches below the first floor level, just so that the deck, the, the property falls off about two feet to the rear. So just so that the deck wasn't kind of uh, elevated higher than the front porch. You know, it felt like it would, uh, it just reduces the impact. And if any of you guys sit stop by, it's really hard to see back there anyway. There's pretty mature trees. But anyway, I, that was kind of part of my thinking in the rear to kind of just reduce the scale. So on the, um, so the kind of the second challenge part of it is, you know, how, how to sort of create a very discreet, hopefully not so impactful rear addition. So then that left the, uh, the third part of how I thought about it is, is how do I expand a half story into the attic? So um, I did look at um, other Sears uh, modern homes uh, from 1919, and some of them had shed and gable roof dormers. Um, why I felt I couldn't do that here is just the current roof ridge is too low. Like any shed dormer if there's any slope at all, even a three and 12 slope would probably be about two feet higher than the existing roof. So I said, okay, well that's, that's not so helpful. And so um, I did introduce what I call a clipped gable. And um, I know staff, you know, I have, haven't really created, I certainly couldn't find any version of that in the Sears catalog. But I did kind of, um, you know, my observation of um, other craftsmen bungalows, and I, I don't know if I can, I, I did take some pictures of, there's a, there's a house two doors to the north that actually has a clipped gable. Am I, am I allowed to pass copies around? To yes, you can. I'll wait for you to. So while while she's passing those out, I'll just add, um, I guess, a little bit of clarification. Um, yep. The committee is required to review any decisions based on congruity with the character of the Glenwood Brooklyn district. Right. Um, so some of the Sears details may be relevant to design considerations, but overall okay. directing comments toward congruity with the district uh, that it's sitting in okay. would be the strongest statement. So to, just to that end, uh, one of these is yes. clearly within the district, but one I believe is not. Yeah, the other one's at five points, of course, just north. Right. And uh, I'm gonna uh, ask you to, to uh, direct your comments to the proposed changes that uh, you wanna make to okay. the house and to the structure in the back and uh, to respond to the issues raised in staff, uh, staff concerns in the staff report. Great. So I, I would say maybe it's this uh, south, I'm sorry, the south elevation, this clipped dormer, I would say um, um, the, certainly the property of two doors down at 1106 Glenwood Avenue has a very similar clipped dormer. Now that's the front gable one story entry and that's, that's the first image. So if I understood is that, I don't, I don't know if I, the other one's a five point, so that, that's probably not so relevant. Um, I think of what else. Um, you know, repeating the one over one double hung windows, you know, repeating the siding, you know, much of what was acknowledged in the staff report. But as, And I know there's, let me look at my. I 
I'm just a couple of comments around this side elevation. So the the face of the dormer on the south side is is a um, 28 inches uh, back from the fit, the wall of the first floor, and then the E projects another 30. So just um, it, together, at least you know, not, not comparing projected Eve to projected V, but from the lower level projected Eve to the face of the dormer is just under five feet. So I suppose my proposal is that as viewed from the street or passers-by, whether it's Glenwood or Washington, um, like, I guess, I mean, my, my judgment, I don't know if that counts as fact, is that it's a, um, a good solution to the problem of, of how to discreetly add square footage to the second floor. Um, I think a couple of things. Um, I know this, I don't know if this is in the follow-up category. I know um, I need more detail on the double hung windows. Um, there was a suggestion of, of uh, standing seam metal roofing at the rear, which, the, you know, honestly, I, I'm not so married to that other than my thinking was that I would match the existing front porch. Um, but so, I, you know, I, I don't have a strong opinion either way. Um, but uh, I'd be curious if I came back, like at some point in the future, it's, it's a little bit rusty in the front, not part of this project, but I'd be curious if I did want to replace it with a metal roof, you know, what would be the choice made? But that, that's probably a question for later. So I'd, I'd be happy to do either one on the Yeah, on if, the if you were just going to replace in kind, you wouldn't need a COA at all. Okay. So you're not required to make a change. It's okay. just if you are making a change, Got it. the COA okay. process kicks in. All right, that's good to know. And then I could probably, you know, some information later, I know on the double hung windows, um, the specific, I know what they are, I just didn't submit it. The same for the uh, door and the cellar door that's a Bilco door. Um, and I suppose around the windows, and this is more of a, I don't know what the right procedural way. So the existing house has a combination. There are some casement windows on the attics that are a four light double casement window. And those are single pane painted, actually dark painted. But then all of the main level windows have been, except for the front door that's original, the windows are a, a white vinyl, you know, which at this point I wasn't planning on undoing that. Um, I know that doesn't meet code, so, um, but it's really, um, I can certainly do a better, you know, clad wood window in the new, and then I can make, make it match the white vinyl. But I, you know, I don't know if that's a appropriateness question. You know, should I make them darker? And, you know, so I don't know how the if that's a, a question for later in the submittal to to see what you know if I try to get a dark color or or white approved. I don't know. If that's a, a question to resolve here, or is that? So uh, this is a call it a quasi-judicial hearing. So it's kind of like a court hearing where you, you present evidence, other people are, have the opportunity to present rebuttal evidence, uh, and then the committee uh, judges whether the uh, project as proposed to us is congruous or not with the special character of the district. Okay. Uh, so it's not really an appropriate venue for us to have a Q&A back and forth. Okay. We'll ask you questions, but you can't really ask us questions because we're essentially the judge sitting in, in judgment of whether uh, your project uh, is congruous or not. Yep. So, um, so just, to, I, just to add a little bit of detail, if there are any, if the application is approved and there are any conditions attached to that, mm -hmm. like providing window specifications, we just follow up the two of us as staff and applicant afterward. This is the big picture approval. Got it. Okay. And if they if they care, you know, beyond what's shown on the elevations, what the window design should look like, 
they can add that to the condition for specificity. Yeah. But other than that, we, we can work with you after the meeting uh, to right. figure that piece okay. out. And to further add to that and answer your question, in Glenwood, Brooklyn, color isn't regulated. So oh, okay. the color choice would be your preference. Okay. And, and again, I would just uh, you know, talk about the proposed changes that you want to make uh, to yep. the structure and the, and the uh, addition in the back. Um, and talk about you know the issues raised and the staff concern. That that's what the committee is yeah. is really here to to, okay. to to talk through. Should I go through the the staff concerns, or how does that how does that work? Uh, anything that you want the committee to consider before they discuss amongst themselves and take a vote, you should address that now. Um, they may have questions for you. That's the next step in the hearing. Okay, um, cool. But those would be direct. So okay. So I think I'm good, yeah. I don't think there's anything else I need to present. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to provide comment on the application? All right, seeing none, we'll proceed with committee questions. I've got a few. Um, very nice application, it's beautiful. I mean, very complete, um, and it's just nice to see, and you've obviously put a lot of time and thought into this, so that's appreciated. Um, obviously, you're very detail-oriented, and I live in a house of a similar size, so I know the constraints of trying to squeeze in attic space, so I'm appreciative of that. Um, you probably saw from the, the staff concerns, I, I think probably a lot of our dialogue will be around congruity of the proposed dormers, um, and you know, staff outlined in their concerns some of the proposed alternatives. So a couple questions um, about the dormer. You mentioned something a minute ago about the a shed, so just a single slope not not working. Um, help help us understand that a, yeah. a little bit better. Well, and this I wanted to. So, you know, I, I haven't drawn it, so I'll mm -hmm. ask you to imagine it. If you look at the front elevation, yep. So, because of the ridge line, like normally a shed roof, you know, it's you have the dormer sides, the dormer face, and we'll get to that. Aside from that, I'd have to widen the face of the dormer uh, from the truncated part, which I'll get to that on the next elevation. But I think from this view, realizing this is pure elevation, you wouldn't see any slope. It would look like a flat roof. Mm -hmm. So usually shed roofs have a slope to them. So that's why I was saying in order to, I can't really raise the head height at the windows. So I, the only thing I could do to create a slope is to lift up the backside, which would then kick that above the roof line. Mm -hmm. you know, otherwise, I mean, I could do that. It's a flat roof. Uh, can do the same flat roof, but then there's no truncated gable sides creating a valley. So, like, um, in my judgment, that would look awkward. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, you, it would feel... Um, like, I couldn't find an exa a good example of that being done in the district with no slope. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is is one, but how to do a dormer, you know, with uh, a no shed roof, if that makes sense. So that's, that's what I meant. Okay, good. And, you know, even I appreciate that you brought some additional examples, because these are always, this is really the type of information we need. I mean, my takeaway when I look at 1106, which is just a few houses up, yeah. is I, I see what you mean about the, the um, I, w I would I was going to call it a hip dormer, but you called it like a club, a clipped, yeah, like a clipped a, dormer, yeah. yeah. Um, a but table, but it's yeah. still uh, yeah. The, so the that clipped form does also follow that's on this gable follows the the primary roof form, and right. and I think that's what makes it you know compatible with itself. And I think if I'm just translating staff concerns right. about you know. Their, their comment said, um, uh, most dormers in the district have a gable or shed roof form, and I think that's, you know, 
we're asking this question, or I'm asking that question because it seems like that might be more, more compatible with the simple roof form of the primary structure that exists today. So it was yep. just a question of, you know, trying to understand better the proposed gable form because it does feel a little different from the rest of the the primary right. roof form. Yeah. Um, so d just give that some thought. My fellow commissioners might have some other questions and I'll, I'll let you respond to that if you want. I do have a couple other questions, yeah. but we can stay on that for a second. Well, I, I suppose one, and I, I just scrolled to the side elevation. If if I were to do a, 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 a gable with a seven and 12 slope, yeah, that obviously let's just say for discussion purposes, it's at the left left side of that clipped dormer. Um, I couldn't fit an egress window in, and it would kind of make that, you know, there, therefore I couldn't even do a bedroom. So, from a height so that's, perspective, from a height perspective, mm -hmm. yeah. Because because I've also tried to push the face back as far as I can, but which is I mentioned the the twenty eight inches, and that's as far as I can push it back to. Um, What's the most minimum size egress window that double hung, and that mm -hmm. and that's that window. Mm -hmm. You can't get the sash more than twenty four inches, the bottom sash. So I can't push it back either. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I could. You could look at a gable that came further out. Let's say just for discussion, it comes all the way out to the face, and then you could fit a window in, but it's going to be lower. It's going to be like an attic window, and. Yes, it's a gable form, but you're now coming all the way out to the face, uh, which is possible, but it, you know, I think is maybe it's a trade-off. It's more in keeping, but less desirable. <laughs> so how about a shed with a low slope? Did, uh, surely you probably considered that. Because um, I think when you, in your initial discussion, you mentioned three and 12, but with yeah. metal. Well, you so a shed, and maybe I can. So a shed with a low slope, and this is the side view. So if I'm moving the head of the window down, which I could do, right now it's a six foot eight high window. Let's say for discussions, I moved it down to a um, six foot mm -hmm. high to create more slope. What that will have to do though is now I'm gonna have to push the dormer out to the mm -hmm. exterior facade. That, that might, that might so be that, more congruous, though, within yeah. the district. If you look around yep. this district, you might find some more examples. Right. I, I can't say for certain, but you might, you know, the way this process goes, we might ask you to provide further evidence, and you might be able to find, I think you could be able to find that. Right. And I know it's, you know, for some people maybe, you know, in the room or watching, it might seem like, well, this is just the side, why make such a big deal of it, but this this is a very small house that I've always thought is very prominent, and you also presented evidence that it is very much intact, which is a really like you know if you look up the Winona yeah. details, it is it is pretty much that house right out of the catalog. So it's been retained, and you know it's being proposed to be altered in a way that is highly visible, even if it seems like it's attic yeah. space. So that's why I'm asking all the questions about that. Right. The, if I could just ask one other separate question, um, and I understand why um, it was, you haven't talked a whole lot about losing the chimney, but that is another one of the staff concerns and um, working around chimneys is difficult, but they are typically you know, significant features. So um, could you help us understand a little bit about that decision or proposed decision? Well, I, I mean, a couple of things. It's, it's a non-working chimney. Um, and there was never any fireplace in the house. So, um, and let me look at the photos. It's been parged over. So uh, presumably it was brick before, but, um, oops, sorry. I was trying to scroll and read at the same time. Yeah, I can't, probably can't zoom here, but that it's hard. To, it's hard to tell. That's just a, a light, probably painted stucco, you know, painted plaster. 
that does, they, they kept the stepping of the brick probably, but it's just parched over. Mm -hmm. So part of it is because it's non-working and then practically speaking, it's right in the middle of the, the gable, which is where the stair <laughs> needs to be. So that, okay. that's kind of what led to that decision. Okay, um, I don't have any other questions right now, thank you. Any other questions from the committee? Yes, I have one. Um, let's see, this is in relation to staff concern. Let's see, sorry, scrolling. Um, staff concern number four. Um, I just want to get some more information for us to speak to this concern. Um, it is about the addition in the rear. Um, specifically, I want to understand, um, number one, can you confirm the, just over the addition part um, in the roof in the attic section, there's no program under that, correct? It's just attic space? On the second floor, you mean? Second or? floor. No, it's okay. just, I mean, right. maybe I haven't like framed, you know, figured out, but it, maybe it's a little bit of a vaulted ceiling, but there's nothing. Okay. No space. Okay. Um, and you will be removing, and um, will you be removing the window that lives on that exterior wall, the existing? Like the attic window? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, what, what I had hoped to do is relocate that double window to the new rear facade. I see. I see. You know, okay. As if it were built that way. Okay. Let's see. I think that was my question. That's it. Tracy, any questions? Jordan? No. All right. Uh, thank you very much. You can have a seat. Um, go ahead and close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and uh, we'll move to committee discussion. Sure. Jordan, you didn't have any questions. I didn't, I didn't have any questions. Okay. <clears throat> I, I, I feel like I, you know, sympathetic to the need for more space, but also the, I feel like the, the South Dormer is, it, it just feels a little awkward. It doesn't feel congruous, I guess. And um, that that's where I'm, I'm struggling. I, I think I could reconcile, I think personally, I feel like there was a good explanation for the chimney um, and I, I hear staff's concerns on the relocated or, you know, replica brackets towards the rear, but I think it, you know, the roof does step up a little bit as it, as it, you know, and the addition steps in. So I feel like, I mean, for me, that's enough of a deviation to say that that's, you know, it's not just extruding the house back further. So I, I was... I'm satisfied with that. I agree with you about, sorry. I agree with you about the rear addition. I think that the sensitivity of bring, you know, beyond whatever UDO needs it was just to actually make that move to bring the, the side walls in and to cut in on the um, continuous roof. I, to me, su you know, I am an architect, but it does suggest addition mm -hmm. to me. So I think that that would be, to me, that satisfies me. I think that, but I agree. I think the dormers, um, especially because the one, and I realize the one to the north is brought more flush with the face because it's considered a non-primary facade. But um, I think that, you know, that would, it, I think your term awkward is probably the best thing and like incongruous also as well. How do we, how do we feel about, I mean, <clears throat> this is a primary, um, sort of facade, so uh, maybe it's a different language than the primary facade of this building, so it can't be, I guess, just trans transplanted to the side, but is there a, an argument that, you know, it maybe isn't the most popular gable form in the district, but there is a precedent for it? Yeah. Well, you're making that argument, so yes, I think you could make the argument. But it, it for one, it's it it simulates the primary roof form there, so I think that's 
the correlation I have. Like it's a, you know, it's an AA relationship and I'm looking for that AA relationship here rather than the AB, like, you know, it, there's not quite the same compatibility to the primary structure. That That is also different because it's covering a, a porch. Um, and so, you know, similarly, the subject structure that we're discussing does have, I believe, a, a hipped roof on its front porch because, you know, that's how it accommodated coverage there. Um, I don't know that that would necessarily work. Perhaps it would, but the the example provided Jordan, I don't, it, it's not hosting any windows, um, which makes it also just, it's a different architectural element because it's covering the porch and not, you know, part of the second story. But I, I, you know, when I did my site visit, um, you know, it's a beautiful neighborhood just to, you know, walk around. And I think there are a lot of examples of different dormer types. So I think maybe the answer is to ask, you know, we could propose that the applicant tries to create a little bit more um, evidence for the dormer and, um, you know, bring that back to us for a future future hearing. Yeah, that was going to be my second um, tag on point to you is that the, again, to use your term, AAAB could also just be presented as evidence that there is something like that. Um, the other part of that dormer conversation I think that we haven't brought up is the cascading, I think we've referred to them as cascading dormers previously, so additional evidence of that form. Um, since it is primary as well. Sure. You'll make a motion? Sure. Um, well, yeah. yeah. Uh, it would be to um, want to make sure we, we cover all these staff concerns yep. that were before we. Um, the, the chimney in the rear brackets, um, I don't. I don't really see a solution there. I understand the necessity of removing the chimney, but it's a little hard to square that circle. Well, so this is also a street side overlay district. Right. You know, it is, it is, you know, set back a bit. Um, so, I mean, maybe some evidence could be provided as to how far back it is, um, you know, from, this principal facade being along Washington Street, um, th that might be a way to just provide additional evidence to that. But, you know, Jordan, he hearing that it's non-functioning non and, you know, our governance is not on the interior, but when we know that it doesn't serve, you know, purpose, if there's not like a fireplace or hearth, you know, seems like it could be out of service, you know, obviously from its former life. So I, I, I think that would make sense. I, or I could come around on, on that staff concern. Mm -hmm. And I think I already mentioned, I know you mentioned, Jordan, the, the rear facade detailing the brackets, but. It's really like, replacing you know, like for like. I mean, I get, yeah. <clears throat> looking at the existing facade, they're already there. And the applicant did mention that, you know, without it, the the overhang decreases. It kind of becomes cheaper. I think was the phrase he used. So I, I think it's at least cre it's a small house, so it's creating harmony on all four sides. So I I could come to terms with that. It's really just the dormer form and having evidence. Um, that would be why I would, you know, move to. Um, defer it until a future uh, hearing. So, sounds like, you know, maybe one through three or four could be requiring evidence from the district, like, it's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. And Tracy, I may have cut you off. It looked like you were about to say something. I'm yeah, sorry. I was also going to agree that 
I think the chimney, given that it is so far back in the existing structure and non-functioning, could be overlooked. Um, and perhaps another design solution would be possible for the replicating of the brackets. Again, I am not an architect, so I don't know what that would be. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I think um, the applicant may want to ask ask a question if we want to briefly open up the. Sure, uh, you can come back up, Mr. Taylor. Yeah, I don't want to mess up with protocols, but you know, honestly, I missed the. I, I'm rereading the staff report on the chimney. I totally missed that. So everything I said is true, but you know, if desired, I can certainly keep the exterior part of the chimney and just figure out how to structurally support the brick. Basically, it's removing the masonry within the envelope of the house and then just keeping it. I mean, if that's a It sounds like the committee's fine with the, the chimney being axed. Uh, so, I, but that, that's up to you how you yeah. want to proceed. Yeah. So, no, but I, I'd be, well, I guess I'd, I'd be okay with doing that, with keeping the chimney from the exterior if that were desirable, uh, if that were a, a condition attached. Uh, okay. And also, I was thinking about the... Uh, the five-part brackets, and I know part of the language talks about retaining the elements. Mm -hmm. So rather than replicate them, I could just relocate them mm -hmm. if that made a difference. I mean, I think that's an appropriate storyline, um, but I don't know if, if it would necessarily sway our decision. Okay. Um, I think I think the, the dormer form will be the primary thing we, yeah, we would just okay. ask you to come back with more evidence for. Got it, yeah, so, okay, I was just on those two. I know that's yeah. the main crux sure. of the issue, yeah. So, I'll note that the evidentiary hearing has been closed again, uh, back to the committee discussion. Okay. Uh, I, I move to defer. Uh, set a date, so it would be the September meeting. Uh, at, to the uh, September uh, Certificate of Appropriateness meeting. Right. I might need help with the date. The 26th. Colette, thank you. All right, motion's been made to uh, defer the application to the September 26th meeting. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, so the application has been deferred uh, specifically for you to come back in September and provide more information on uh, whether the uh, proposed South Dormer uh, is what you want to do is congruous with uh, with the rest of uh, Glenwood, Brooklyn. So. so Mr. Taylor, I will follow up with you next week via email um, and provide you with an updated, you know, a new deadline to get that to us for the staff report. Yeah, and we, if you want to schedule a meeting to, to chat and talk about your options, that's, we can do that as well. Thank you. Thanks. All right, that next application on the agenda is COA 57 2024. This is 506 Tilden Street. Uh, while the applicant's making their way up, I'll go ahead and recognize staff for their presentation. I have a cry of mouse. So this is COA 57, 2024 for 506 Tilden Street. It is in the Glenwood, Brooklyn Historic District, which is a street side HOD. The request is to construct a two-story rear addition with east side bump out and rear deck and remove a service chimney. This is a view of the house from Tilden Street. And walking around here, this is um, from further to the west on Tilden. Uh, the example that's noted in the application you can see is directly next door. This is a view of the west facade. And again, just continuing to walk around the house. Um, this is from the rear yard looking back at the uh, north wall. View of the backyard. Uh, this is the east facade. Um, and a view from Tilden, again, looking back at the example included in the application. A very abbreviated summary of staff concerns are the height, 
Um, some details noted on the plan, uh, the roof plan specifically omits the front dormer, um, and the addition is not inset on the roof. Uh, the window and door details were um, a little confusing. The application notes the north and south windows, but doesn't reference the east and west. And then other material details and specifications that are typically provided as conditions. Right. And the applicant you. does have a presentation. I right. uh, ask you to please introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Jeffrey Hudgens, live at 506 Tilden Street in Raleigh, right. resident for 35 plus years. Great, thank you. Um, ask you to go ahead and um, raise your right hand, go ahead and swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great, thank you. You may proceed. Great. Um, first, thanks to the commission and the committee here this evening. Um, as I said, I'm a 35 plus year resident in Raleigh and I firmly believe in historic preservation. So it's a real privilege to live in a neighborhood that is designated as such. I wanna thank the staff, Aaron and Colette, and I believe their intern, Elizabeth, are exemplary employees of the city of Raleigh. And as a staff, they do yeoman's work in making your jobs probably a lot easier, but from guiding us lay people through the process of trying to improve our homes, they are invaluable. And also thanks to the DRAC Commission, I was fortunate enough to meet with um, Elizabeth Caliendo and Jeannie um, McAuliffe um, for their meeting and suggestions was very much appreciated uh, several weeks back. So Tilden Street is a great street. It's a gr we have great neighbors who are actually engaged and working diligently to bring the street back to its former glory with new um, vibrancy. I'm, I'm really proud to have been able to restore my home at 506 back from some somewhat rather stressful renovations through the unkind decades of the 60s and 70s um, and was thrilled to be able to uncover the beauty of the current home for the most part rather than try to rebuild uh, with no existing detail. Um, you've worked with our neighbors to the east, Chris and Adele Sweetwood, uh, to bring 508 Tilden Street back from the brink and into completely new light. And I believe in the very near future, you'll be meeting with um, our new neighbors to the west, Anuj and Vanita Mittal, uh, as they engage to bring new life back to 504 Tilden. So it's a really exciting time on our street and bringing life back to these beautiful homes is part of our um, passion. So at 506 Tilden Street, it's a wonderful 1920s craftsman-esque bungalow, um, originally a center hall and four square with a kitchen L out the back. Um, I began phase one and phase two with the restoration of the existing interior and wonderful re reclamation of the um, three full three, wonderful th full three-sided wrap porch in 2020 and 2021, thanks to the staff and the commission as well. So now we're on to phase three. Um, the goal is to bring a, a six foot addition kitchen expansion to the north, a proper family room, which is currently built over two older stoops and an enclosed addition. Sometime in the late 60s or 70s, it is not very attractive inside, nor out particularly. A primary bedroom, a bath, and a closet on the first floor. Uh, the goal is to add two small bedrooms and one bath on the new second floor quirky, fun, and in keeping with the style of a bungalow uh, feel, interior-wise. Um, there is a request for a three-foot, six-inch bump out on the east side, and that's requested to accommodate a staircase along with a modern size primary bath and closet on the first floor. It's simply to garner that little bit of width that suddenly makes the house truly livable and truly appropriate to get to the second story. Um, that bump out is not incongruous with previously approved renovations on other Glenwood Brooklyn properties, most notably next door at 508, uh, which now includes a four foot eight bump out on the west side from the original structure. Um, the design goal is to keep this new addition in harmony with the existing structure. We adore the look and design of our home and do not wish to have an addition that looks like a contemporary, modern, or otherwise unharmonious structure to the existing. I know some people like that. It's not my jam <laughs> at all. Um, the roof materials, eaves and siding, windows are projected and proposed to match exactly to the existing. Um, the proposal adds 861 square feet to the existing lower level and 581 to the new second floor. 
uh, adding a total square footage of just over 1,400 to the existing home, bringing it to 3,383. Um, you have received a packet um, of some layman um, isometric plates uh, showing the impact and what I feel is the lessened impact visually as you look at it from uh, around its perimeter of the addition, particularly the dormers and the new roof line. Um, addressing items in the staff report, the height is indeed two feet taller than the current original roof line, pushing that change in height back to begin six feet back from the existing ridge peak, I believe helps lessen the impact of that uh, increased change in height. I've worked to ensure the expansion does not, in my opinion, overpower the original design, architecture style, and is compatible with the original structure. The existing front dormer is indeed to remain. Apologies, it was simply mistakenly omitted on the proposed roof plan. It exists on the existing roof plan on all elevations uh, throughout and all of the ISOs. Um, it is part of the, it is a main part of the character of the house and we intend to keep that running through uh, into the new addition. The eaves and soffits are to match the existing exactly around the entire home. They are wonderful. It is an architectural feature of the home. The roof material on the west dormer, there is a very little tiny shed part of an existing hip. We've gone through four iterations of dormer styles, uh, originally shed, and then it was gabled, and we've done modifications of them. After speaking with the DRAC committee, we came to the conclusion they should likely, in all ways possible, match the front dormer uh, in its cute little style. Um, however, to get the width of that bedroom up there, we need to extend out a little further um, to the north and to do that, rather than extending the width of the dormer overall, we chose to hide it with a little shed dormer kind of perched to the side of it to get us that, that interior space. Um, it is proposed and understood agreeable to the flat pan that have no ripples or striations, as part of, noted in the staff report. The exterior lighting will be limited to the rear deck area. Happy to provide staff with location and specifications, details moving forward, likely only two or three right on the back porch. Nothing big, no giant booger lights hanging off the side of the house. Um, gutters and downspouts are to match exactly the five inch um, continuous pieces that are there now that were installed during the renovation in 2020 and 21. Um, they are noted on the isometric drawings, happy to provide a um, gutter only roof uh, plan um, moving forward. The HVIC units are currently to remain in the existing location where they are outside of what is one of the bedrooms on the lower level on the east side under the existing windows where they are now. Um, there is currently no plan for that to be changed. There is no other than plantings. There is no um, uh, hiding wall, no a modesty wall behind them at this point uh, never was part of it when it was put in. Um, so there's no in current intent to do that. Happy to go down that path if we need to. Um, I'm happy to comply with some of the potential conditions um, listed in the staff, as included in the report. All siding and trim to be painted and installed with smooth side out, absolutely. The metal roof to have flat pan, no ripples or striations. Um, I'm not quite sure, given what the staff is, how it's worded in the report, which pieces may fall under full considerations as we move forward that the conditions that the staff reviews during the process once a placard is applied. Um, I understand that the revised roof plan needs to be include the existing front dormer, totally good on that. Manufacturer specs on windows and doors. Um, all windows are to replicate the current windows, one over one, um, north, east, south, west. They are all to match with the exception of the kitchen slider that is noted, which is simply to get a pass through to the ex exterior deck. Um, the detail on the doors, the two rear doors that are not street facing at all, they're actually alley facing. One I believe faces west and one faces north. Um, that was simply a consideration of simply haven't pulled the trigger on which lovely door style to put. 
Uh, it's a little hard to plan that this far out. The goal was uh, it, certainly a five light is great, a more contemporary door. It is one of them is leading into the um, primary suite. One of them is leading from a, a vestibule that is attached to the great room or family room. So whether it's a five light or three light, totally happy to make sure that staff has, has taken a look and seen it um, moving forward before anything is installed and you get the appropriate details needed. So that's it in general. Um, we love our street, we love our home. Our intent is to move this wonderful 100-year-old home into the 21st century um, and to make it a beautiful, modern, updated, and working home ready to secure and protect its owners for another 100 years. It's a great street, and it's come a long way in just like five or six years. We're really proud to live there. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, are there any uh, members of the public who wish to make comment on the application? Please come forward. Please state your name and address. Adele Sweetwood at 508 Tilden Street, Raleigh, North Carolina. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Just very quickly, as Jeff mentioned earlier, I am and my husband, as the neighbors of 506 Tilden, uh, we were in front of you guys two years ago and got our lovely COA at that time. Um, and it's been wonderful to bring that house to life. I can't tell you how many people come to our house and say, oh my God, this, is this the original everything? It looks original. So the, the idea of keeping it historic, keeping it relevant, keeping it in the character of the neighborhood, I think we accomplished. And I'm so, I know Jeff did in his first round, and I'm so excited for their second round, and we fully support this project. Um, to Jeff's point about keeping all of the lovely change, but change with consideration and respect for history on Tilden Street. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any additional members of the public who would like to provide comment? All right. Seeing none, uh, we'll proceed with committee questions. <laughs> if there are any. Rob? Yep. Yeah. You know, I have questions, yeah, Mr. Chair. You would. <laughs> <laughs> nice application. I, you know, I think we can see what's going on. I, I actually had to take I, the root when you get these who, these hip roofs, they're they're very complicated. So it looked like from the front, you're maintaining the the roof line, stopping at the hipped ridge, and then you have a small section that's that's flat. Yes, six and, and a half feet. Yeah. Okay. And we <laughs> we and it looks like you've got a way for that to fall off. Um, I mean, the only strange thing of the application that I can tell is really that one dormer on the, I believe the west side that you acknowledged and how it sort of steps. And that is, you know, it's in the, the back, the rear half of the, the house. So I guess my question for you is, could you not just widen that dormer and do a similar kind of flat detail to that, that you're already doing closer to the front ridge and that, that or just give it some thought um sure i think it was choosing the lesser of the evils yeah, going through the I, iterations of dormers um i did feel that if we had gone with a three window wide and really just lengthened and and made yep. that dormer considerably larger than the other one that would have tilted the house incorrectly um so which is why we just did this little hide behind I could see that. I, I'm not sure we would ever like pick up on that passing by because you know you see it kind of on a bias as from one side and right. then on the other, um, uh, and and you know staff could probably correct me, but that is it's not marked on your drawings, but that does seem like it's beyond fifty percent of the house. But staff remind us on the kind of stipulations of when it's an addition, how, how, how a street side overlay district um, should be considered. Sure, so the 50% the that you're mentioning actually pertains to the historic house. So say there was a request to change a, a rear window, you know, fill an opening. If it were beyond that 50% line, which is from the front wall to the rear wall, that would not be subject to review. But when it comes to an addition that is taller or wider, 
which this one is taller uh, mm -hmm. and wider. Um, the the entire edition itself also comes into review. Okay. For some reason, I have trouble remembering how that that sort of adds up. Um, that that's really that questioning about that dormer was my my only right. real question. Um, it's it's a beautiful house. I really, I mean the. Front porch is amazing, so really nice job with the application. And I, I can tell you're trying to be sympathetic to you know the house and the street. And I remember the application from two years ago okay. from your neighbors. So thanks. thanks for showing up again. It yeah, always helps. Yeah, thank um, you. And it was it, to your to your ask as well. It's it's. I wish there were two extra feet in the original roof that I wouldn't have to, and we just run the peak straight back at that same level. There's just we're just that. 18 inches shy of being able to really accommodate that, um, unless we shorten the room heights, the ceiling heights on the first floor addition. Um, they're just, the um, uh, construction line begins about 72% back from the front elevation of the house. Um, I know that in 508, that started at about the 52% line, um, and that this just being two smaller dormer pieces rather than a full second um, going all the way back. Um, the, the first floor really is 45 feet long from point of impact or demolition going back through the master suite. Um, but again, keeping it at that first floor level um, helps lessen that impact as well. Any additional questions from the committee? Uh, yeah, I, I see that you, I guess, I was wondering if you, if there are any other um, properties in the district that have a similar um, height, size, relationship besides your neighbor's house. Right. It's very relevant, it's very close. Uh, so I, I'm just curious if there are any other houses that have that either exist already like this or have had some COA intervention to right. uh, add this kind of volume in the back. There's, um, you're familiar with, I believe it's 616 um, Wills Forest, uh, which is a significant addition, uh, contemporary addition on the historic. Um, takes uh, a currently an, an original wrapped porch on one side, the L, and does a, a contemporary addition going back in a second story. That that kind of, to me, is as close as I can find um, in the area. There is, in the area, there are only six wraparound porches in all of city, the three historic districts that I can find. Um, Luckily, one of them is across the street from us, but two are in Oakwood and two are in Boylan Heights. But it's a rarity, and I get that the symmetry of this house, it is one symmetric, beautiful beauty. It could be out in the middle of a field in 200 acres, and it would have the same elegance that it has on the street side here. Um, haven't found anything that's like it. There is what we call the mini twin to it on Glenwood Avenue. Um, Colette found a picture, did notice it. It is a very similar, but reduced it likely does not have the center hall but it is the same roof form their so their chimneys are turned 90 degrees from the way ours are so um, it's as close as it comes but again that one has had significant pushback addition and down um, it they would never gone up with it but it's the only similar design in any of the three districts to the to our house Any additional questions from the committee? Uh, and sorry, maybe I I missed it. Um, the three foot four bump out on the east side. What was your? So that is to accommodate that? the what it would be the staircase going up to the second story, so that it falls apparently on the the ridge line or a, a support line, and also to garner enough room to have. The, uh, the primary suite bathroom and closet um, so that we're not obliterating into the kitchen space, if you will, where the deck is currently proposed. Um, it would just be making a lot of useless space there. Um, but that is the request for a 3-6. Okay. 
Any additional questions? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and move to committee discussion. You can have a seat. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question for staff real fast. Um, the 508 Hilton COA two years ago, was that for the big addition in the back? Okay. Yes, it All included right. rear addition and a bump out on the side as well. Gotcha. Thank you. And Lauren, we did at that time I was here on the COA. We had up. we had a <laughs> we had a lot of dialogue about the height um, and its relationship to the primary structure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this app this not we're not discussing that application here, but um, this application does refer to that and it is nice. I think it's nice to see the built condition in in the evidentiary report. Um, or the application, rather. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, the drawings are drawings are definitely challenging, especially elevation. So I appreci I'm appreciative of this additional, these additional exhibits to understand it in three dimensions because also, you know, your eye level is not the same as an elevation. So, um, you know, when I did my site visit for this house, I was relieved to see the neighboring house felt less big than I, you know, maybe had concerns of. So I feel like this application does propose um, less height and feels more compatible with the primary structure. Um, it steps up gently. I, I do, I, I'm, it's like halfway through the proposed document. I do, I do feel like this, you know, I appreciate staff explained to me that, you know, for an addition, we are looking, if it's taller and wider, we're, you know, evaluating that. I, I feel like this does not, this one dormer does not feel compatible um, or con congruous with the, the district. I, I think there's a way to make it congruous, but we're not design review, but we could maybe even propose, I mean, the applicant did mention their consideration that they had already given to making it wider as a way to, you know, still get the space that they needed. But that's really the only thing that I I struggle with. A lot. I, I mean, I think that the doors on the rear are a little bit foreign. I'd like to see some evidence of those, but the applicant did also mention they were, you know, they have some, you know, their mindset is to have some design flexibility with that. So I'm, you know, that seems good for this dialogue. Otherwise, yeah, that those are my really my only I'd, concerns. Yeah, it, it helps having your neighbor have a very similar, uh, very similar project. Um, I do find the the rear facade, especially this north and west face isometric view in the additional packet. Uh, I think it's the second or third from the last page. Uh, I find that to be very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, which, which parts? Well, we just spent a lot of time talking about clipped gables. Mm -hmm. um, and and the sort of the very asymmetrical eaves on either side of that that gable. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I would. I, I know we would be challenged to find some evidence of that sort of facade patterning in the district. Uh, of, of which and, which part, Jordan? Do you mind help? So I'm 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 specifically referring to this mm, okay. clipped gable, and and to the the right of it, there's a sort of shed that is attached to a gable, mm -hmm. um, that, and that's the part that I was talking about. That yeah. it maybe that dormer could just be widened enough just to in, so it didn't require that. Even if there was a balance right. on the two sides, I. I think that would be more congruous. 
I mean, yeah, the, on um, the, and on the clipped gable part, it is still kind of it's partially a hip form, which yeah. the dormer, the dormer has a hip language. You know, maybe maybe I'm doing mental gymnastics to get there, but I feel like there's a little bit more congruity with the primary structure itself. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you don't feels, have to agree. It feels, uh, well, I take that back, but the combination of the height and the sort of, I, I want to say acrobatics, but maybe that's a bridge too far, but uh, the facade patterning along with its height and it being the rear facade feels like Probably There's a be, lot going on. Yeah, probably would be difficult to find a a similar example in the in in the district. I don't. I doubt that it's congruous. Just that dormer, or or you're talking about the kind of that clipped form on the back. Both. Would you, okay. Would you? What if it didn't have that? sort of clipped portion it was just a gable well i'd have to reconsider the application okay. yeah okay i think largely congruous mm -hmm. uh you know like like you said the the neighboring house, it doesn't feel as nearly as large or sort of out of scale is really what we mean when we say that, as maybe the, the drawings or the elevations would lead you to believe. Uh, I'd like to think that the same would be true of this, especially since it's shorter and it's uh, the height difference is, and and the sort of uh, distance between the facade and the addition is greater. Like all of that leads me to believe that maybe it would be totally innocuous. You wouldn't even notice it. So I, uh, but on the other hand, all I have is what's in front of me. So yeah. I do think the photograph of um, 508 as a piece of evidence is pretty convincing as far as that's a taller addition. Um, and it's, you know, pretty inoffensive. And so, yeah, I think that the, I would, I think the speculation that this might even just disappear potentially, depending on your height, um, could be true. Um, and I agree with Rob. I think the only one that feels, I think the only comment would, um, is one that doesn't even really pertain, so I won't even say it. <laughs> um, just that that one dormer doesn't feel congruous. Um, but otherwise, I think that as a, as a whole, this feels um, like a resolved addition. Mr. Chair, could we reopen the, the discussion with the applicant? Sure, we absolutely can. You want to invite them back up? Yep. If, if you don't mind coming back up. So, so, um, and you, you've heard our discussion, but the question, sure. the question is really want to revisit this dormer yeah. and this, this exhibit here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's North and West face isometric, isometric view. Sure. So tell us again, um, you know, you gave some thought that it could be wider and just go all the way back, but there would be an imbalance. But does that, does it work from a roof um, uh, plan? Kind so, of two points there. It, I get, and again, I've played with it many, many different iterations of it. This we felt, and I felt was less offensive to certainly street side, either side, any of the 
really angled looks at the house. It's completely, I think, to the point somebody said it will kind of disappear um, because it is inset to the dormer face. So that little shed is actually tucked back about 10 and 12 inches. So that little shed thing is, it's doing something funky roof line that nobody would ever see from above unless the 30 story tower is built on West Street. Um, but the, it was really meant to hide that particular incongruity, if you will, to the structure. Uh, and, and as for the, the, the kind of Dutch gable, uh, uh, to that backside, it was that was 100% to keep it congruous with the other three dormers and facades that were doing that angle. Mm -hmm. Nothing other. It could. I've played with it all three of them, um, going with simple gable and not a hipped, um, with that lovely angle to it. It just seems more imposing. It, it seemed out of place, and it, that was definitely incongruous to the house mm -hmm. as it exists now. In my mind. Yeah, yeah, I know it's, it could be like, I mean, without seeing it another way, I, I'm, you know, listening to your right. explanation and I'm, yeah. I'm nodding because it, it makes sense, um, you know, and I realize the general public won't come onto your property and sure. see it, but we're, sure. you know, we're tasked with, you know, if it's taller and wider, we're reviewing sure. all, all angles. So we, yeah. we see it right now and that's why we're asking questions. Absolutely but get seems it. seems like you could probably, there's a, you know, we, we can probably yeah. get there with. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll just visually as I put these, because the models were made professionally and uh, I skinned everything you're seeing um, onto them so that it was to the exact model size. And that's what you're looking at is the true spec to it, the true ISO. I did it many iterations of it simply gabled, all three, two dormers in the back. And it wasn't until we added the hip that the house settled down. The whole structure went, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was very, mm -hmm. it was too sharp, even though it has that wonderful big Queen Anne style height yep. roof in the front. When we added the side pitches, it just all settled down and was harmony. So. Yeah, I can, I'm not, you know, from our discussion that you probably heard, I'm not sure that we will all agree on that with one another, but totally I, understand. I, I, I understand where you're coming from. And then I guess my only other question for you is, you, you probably heard us discussing the triple panel doors on the rear, and it, you know, the, you've included some product data. It's a beautiful door. Um, it, it, I'm not sure it necessarily feels congruous with the district, but if there's, is there some, you know, history with it that where it's connected elsewhere in the neighborhood or in the district, um, or I think it's my as far of a nod as I'm, I'm willing to make to a more contemporary style. Um, uh, addition to an addition point. Um, if the idea is that the and, and propose that the deck is the new treated tech, if you will, product, and it's it's got the rail and it's got metal stale rails, stale style rails. That to me is a little more contemporary in look, mm -hmm. and that I was just trying to play with being that. I have the original back door to the house, which is on the side of the front porch now. I get the style and all that. Totally happy to entertain the idea with staff of keeping it very historical and looking a one over whatever they are, you know, something that's cute and cool. But this was just my thing of let's make the back porch a little more hip. Um, that, it's in con that, is in that is congruous to the new addition. So you're going from a much more modernized interior out a much more modernized door to a more modernized deck. And that's that's where that came in. Thank you. Um, sure. I, I don't have any other questions, Wes. I don't know if anyone else Any does. other questions from the committee? All right, thanks. You can have a seat again. I'll close the evidentiary portion of the hearing and uh, pr uh, proceed back to question or discussion. Question for staff on the proposed deck material and railing has has that been approved in this district um i know we've seen some other just standalone deck applications recently or recently in the last couple of years um it has been approved in other districts it's more difficult to say for decks specifically in sure. this district because it is possible to construct a deck without going through the coa process okay that's helpful. 
Okay, thanks. Or in Jordan, where any other thoughts or discussion? Are you are you <clears throat> are you considering conditions? Like what's what's going through your head? Um, no, I'm just thinking. Well, I don't, I'm reconciling that the dormer decision, but I don't know that alternatives are are superior, I guess. So um so yeah. And I, I I mean Jordan, you might we might not agree on it, but I do think the like clip gable end is I think it feels like it's more part of the house and it I agree with the applicant that it like lowers the scale a little bit and makes it seem less you know, pronounced, so. Yeah. I, that was more like a data point. I mean, it's not the, the two applications are not the same, but the roof form is similar. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make note of it. Sure. Um, I feel fine about the clipped gable end. Um, the sort of L-shaped gable is the one that Dormer, uh, yeah, dormer, dor dormer, pardon me, with dormer, shed, yes. but yes, <laughs> the uh, composite one, we'll say, yeah. um, is the one that is just a little sticky for me, but um, I don't know if we can wrap that in a condition. Um, I mean, that's really the only thing that I feel like is keeping me from just being like, mm -hmm. I'm good with this. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Mr. Chair, I'm just thinking here, sorry. Um, and again, without seeing the alternate, it's difficult for me to, I mean, I can imagine mm -hmm. what it might be, but um, again, without having it in front of me, it's difficult to say whether. Yeah, you know, and you know, our, our duty is really not to ask to like yes. <laughs> prepare design options for right. us to <laughs> approve. And I think they've done a pretty faithful job yeah, on every absolutely. other, yeah. other and, aspect. And of hearing, the, hearing the process, um, I can, uh, I've onboarded that they've gone through yeah. a significant amount of design work to get here. Cool. I'm, I'm prepared to make a motion to approve with conditions if, um, if that seems appropriate. Um, and then we can, you all can decide whether you agree with this or not. Um, but uh, I move that based on the evidence presented within the application and the staff report, as well as the testimony provided and during this evidentiary hearing that we approve the application with the following conditions. Uh, one, that the siding and trim be painted and installed with the smooth side facing out. Two, that the metal roof have flat pans with no ripples or striations. Uh, that the following three, that the following be provided to and accepted by staff prior to issuance of the blue placard. Um, a uh, revised proposed roof plan uh, that shows the existing front dormer to remain. Uh, B, the manufacturer's specifications and section for the windows. C, the manufacturer's specification and section for the doors. Four, that the following be provided to and accepted by staff prior to installation or construction. A, the standing room, standing seam roof specifications, including the pan width, rib height, low ridge cap profile and finish. Uh, for B, drawing showing installation location for gutters and downspouts. For C, construction details for the eave and soffit. For D, deck railing dimensions and section. And for E, uh, HVAC location and screening details. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Uh, can I, I believe the applicant was asking if the door specifications and section could instead be provided prior to installation or construction instead of holding up the placard. Okay, I, I think that makes sense, yeah. So, um, correction. Can I can I make that amendment without 
repeating it all? Okay. Yes. So yes. that, thank you. Um, for, uh, sorry, uh, that's um, 3C, the manufacturer's uh, specification and section for the doors prior to construction rather than to staff. Thank you. 3C becomes 4F. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, is, uh, who seconded that motion? You, do you, do you, do you still second? Seconds. Okay, all right. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, congratulations, thank you very much. Uh, the decision will be final after next month's meeting when the uh, minutes are approved and signed. So thank you very much. All right, uh, third and final application tonight is COA 66 2024 515 Polk Street. And while the applicant's coming down, I'll go ahead and recognize staff for their presentation. Yes. All right, so this is COA 66, 2024, for 515 Polk Street. It is in the Oakwood Historic District, a general HOD. The request is a master landscape plan, which includes removing plantings, installing new plantings and planting beds, installing new gravel patios, altering walkways, altering the front walk, installing a storage shed, removing the pond, and installing a water feature. And this is a view of the house from Polk Street. Now, because this is a landscape application, there are far more photos than normal, so just be prepared. Uh, this is a view uh, from the sidewalk looking down the front walk. Uh, these are east and west views of the front yard as standing on that front walk. Um, this is an ancillary walk that is from the sidewalk on, along the, the west side from Polk Street to at the gate, and this is um, going through that gate, the current brick pathway, which leads to the rear yard. Uh, this is the rear yard. There is the existing uh, walkway that is proposed to be uh, replaced with uh, brick. Uh, this is a view of the pond that is directly behind the addition and a, de a detailed view of that pond. Uh, looking across the rear yard from the pond to the existing shed. And again, the shed. Uh, <coughs> lots of rear yard growth. <laughs> and this is towards the end of the pathway, looking back towards the house, which you can barely see there. Um, and these are some of the benches that are shown on the plan, the existing boxwood square. Uh, the summary of staff concerns, the mature heights of, some of the plants were provided, but not all of the plants. Uh, built area calculations were not provided, but should only be increasing with the gravel patios. Uh, front walk and path, Construction details were not provided. There is space on the rear yard plan that is not identified. Uh, it was left blank, so if that's a ground cover or other material, that information should be provided. And there were details on the trellis, the flex fence, the wood storage, and the water feature and fire pit that were not provided. Some of those may be furniture, it was unclear. And then other material details and specifications that are typically provided as conditions. All right, thank you. I'll ask the applicant to introduce themselves. Um, my name is Priya Saidi, um, and I'm an owner of 515 Oakwood, I mean, uh, Polk Street, and this is Stacy Kurtz. Great, thank you. I'll ask you to raise your right hand and go ahead and swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great, you may proceed. Great, thank you. Um, and. Uh, Thank you, Colette, as always. I'm sorry I wasn't there to see you when you came through. Um, so I think um, Colette did a great job of summarizing that overall. I think that I just wanted to clarify a couple points um, for the benefit of the committee. Um, so one of the things that 
uh, was noted in the staff report is um, about the, and this is, just, I'm just going through it in the order that it appears in the um, staff report. So, um, in on page two, um, relating to the front yard, uh, item three, where it says stepping stone pathways proposed to connect the gravel walkway to the front yard. That's actually what's already in this picture. I don't know if you can see um, from the, where I'm moving the mouse. So I don't think that there is a plan to do much with that. Um, at least that's how I'd understood it. Um, or, or maybe I think to uh, something in kind to that to just make it a little bit more usable. Um, and I think the there, there's a little bit of confusion on item four about what plantings are being removed and um, what's being added. I think overall the plan is to to add a, um, a significant number of plantings in the front, but um, these plantings, for instance, these two shrubs, I guess you would call them in the front, are staying. Um, these are staying. The, the again, the two I'm circling um, here. So. Um, if this is detail that you're not looking for, just let me know. But um, the Japanese maple, so anything that's sort of looks like a tree is basically staying. And then in the very front, all of the ivy and whatnot is, is staying there. So I think most of the plantings that are being done are in spaces that areas that basically don't have any plants um, or in the very front, um, in front of the uh, front porch, there are some um, kind of smaller plantings, and that's th this is the area that's going to be supplemented or have a lot more plantings added to them. Um, and the idea is to basically take, um, at least as I understood it, is to take a lot of this kind of dirt area and add plantings there to, to kind of increase the appear, uh, appeal of the front yard. Um, so that's that, and then. Um, so on, on page three of the staff report, item nine at the top, where um, it talks about the walkway along the west side is proposed to be extended into the, yard, uh, into the rear yard. Um, as you can see from this picture, that pathway already basically exists, and it's the pathway that we use for kind of trash and whatnot. So the idea there is to just pave it so it's more accessible, um, to, to allows access to easier access to the rear, rear yard, and also for basically being able to take trash cans and whatnot out. Um, and the, the idea here is that it will be um, smaller than the, the front pathway. So it will be, I think, whatever is necessary to accommodate basically the trash cans is the plan. Um, and then um, on number 12, um, Oh, I think I just explained that one. Oh, and number 13, um, talking about the existing prawn, uh, prawn being removed. Um, so we, we spoke to an arborist about this, and here's the pond. Um, and because our primary concern was doing anything that damages this tree, because we love the tree. Um, and the arborist recommendation was actually that removal of this pond would actually help the tree. And so, um, to basically remove it and replace it with, um, I think it was like tree quality dirt or something like that, and then um, and and then just have plantings on top of it. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, so I, I think um, also I guess on the additional. The two areas of organic gravel that I guess are being um, created in the back, um, those are areas that effectively don't really have much going on. Um, the first, as you can see at the, um, in these embarrassing pictures of our backyard, um, with th there's just nothing there. We're just basically, there's excess material that was there when we, at the time we bought the house and we we're just using it to store it there. So this is one of the areas um, that will be um, kind of a gravel area that will be created um, and making sure to not damage this tree because it's the best thing about our backyard. Um, and then the other area, if I can, I think this is, uh, 
Yeah, I think, uh, so to the, I think to the left of here is where that other, actually, I don't think you can, let me see if there's a further back picture. Okay, yeah, I think this, oh no, this, sorry. So we don't have a great picture of this, but this is actually looks east, and the very right side of this picture, where there's really no um, uh, plantings of no, um, and then it's also, which is also the, let's see, the very left side of this picture, which kind of would, uh, would abut to that picture. That's the area that the fire pit is going. So there's really not much that's growing in that area either. So that's just to explain what, what's happening in those um, two gravel areas that, that we're, we're creating. Um, and then, um, so the, the, the staff report also mentions the, the, the front yard the, the front, front walkway that we're replacing. And uh, I, I think our primary motivation for, for doing that is just what you can see in this picture right here. The, there's, I think three of the concrete, large concrete blocks are pretty banged up and um, cracked. And so it's not, um, I think there is the possibility of potentially replacing all the way up to here, um, but I think we were hoping to basically replace the um, this walkway with brick, which is consistent with a lot of houses in Oakwood that have similar brick walkways going up to the house. Um, so that's that's the plan there. Um, and then, Oh, and then um, on the staff report on page three at the bottom uh, five where it says some of the existing year, rear yard plantings are proposed to be removed. It is clear what plantings are proposed to be removed as an existing condition plan was not provided. So just to add a little bit of color to that, um, this area, um, basically the, the area that we're looking to primarily remove plantings are, is what you could see in this picture on the left-hand side, which um, my understanding is that that's the... Um, that's the Nandina, which is invasive. Um, and we were told that, we've been told by several people um, that it's, they would recommend removing, um, there's basically a mixture of Nandina and bamboo. And so the idea is to just take all of that out and replace it with um, plantings that um, we're hoping will basically be, uh, 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 I, like a rain garden essentially there that will take the water that comes off of our roof and basically take, you know, so. Um, and then, and then other than that, I think the only other thing that's really being removed in the backyard is that we're removing some of the boxwoods. So there are these designs in the back, um, these boxwoods, for instance, you can see in this, the front of this picture, although there's similar ones that are further, slightly further up in the yard, they're actually gonna be moving to the front yard. So, um, and then, let's see. Uh, and then a couple other uh, clarifying points. So the hammock actually is already there. Um, we're not doing anything. It was there at the time that we bought the house, which is, this is one of the posts you can see there. That's, that's been there. Um, the benches, I don't think we're doing anything permanent, so I don't think that will be an issue. Uh, same with the um, planter. Um, and we are not putting in a water feature. Um, so I think that's one of the items that, um, so I, I guess coming to the potential conditions for the, um, uh, for approval, the the main thing I was just actually hoping to get clarification on is the 25% of the year rear yard having grass lawn or other evergreen ground cover. Um, this, it's a heavily uh, tree covered area in the back. And so I don't, I, there's virtually no chance of any grass growing there. Um, and 
there's a lot of green back there. So I'm, uh, that's the only condition I'm, I'm kind of, it's kind of a, it's a pretty large backyard and I'm a little bit concerned about what 25% of that would mean. So that's one concern that I had. Um, and then in terms of the front plantings, there was the concern that was raised about um, having the, I know the, the plan called for um, these hydrangea arborescens. Um, and I think the question slash concern I had is the, from what I understand, the sort of height range for those is three to five feet. Um, and the um, mature height not being greater than 42 feet, I'm not sure what that means when the plant's range is kind of three to five feet. So that's another question slash concern that I had. Um, and then otherwise, I think we're, we're um, oh, and then another question for uh, keyed planting plan, identifying mature heights and ground cover. I was wondering if that's both for the rear yard and the front, because um, that would just uh, be a lot more work if it included the rear. And uh, uh, in terms of woodshed, I, we're happy to provide that. I just, I don't think we have a, a plan for that yet. And as I noted, there's no water feature. So um, that's all I've got. All right. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who wish to provide comment on the case? All right, seeing none, we'll proceed with committee questions. Um, where is the woodshed supposed to go? Oh, so. Um, It's supposed to be along the east side of the rear property. Um, I have a, I don't know if you guys were able to get this, but yeah, so it's, if you were to look at this, it's um, on the east side, um, about midway towards the back. It's like right here. Ah. kind of close enough to the fire pit so that it's usable. Jordan, did that answer your question? Do you see it? I do, I, I do see it. Okay. It, it did answer and, my question. And, and is that shed roof at the height of the top of the fence? I, I think I, um, I was hoping that it would be below um, yeah. Okay. Um, and just to, and is, is the plan view, the site plan, it's page 23 of 57 in the application. Is it in this? And it might not be. It's okay. I mean, they submitted it and we we received it. So I, I mean, we, we can talk through it, but I guess a couple of questions, um, cause you know, first question is just about the staff concern with the, um, well, some of, the, I think Colette mentioned it in the initial presentation, but just trying to understand the amount of hard surface. Um, and it seems like, you know, as you were talking through it and elaborating on it, some of, some of the existing surfaces are existing to remain. Maybe they were covered up and they'll be repaired. But just, I'm just gonna talk through a few of them. So the, the brick walk along the west side of your house is obviously existing, that we see it in the photos. Um, the, the brick walk that is north of your house in the backyard that runs kind of north-south to the rear property line, is is that brick walk existing? Okay. Yeah. So the um, so just to so th this picture uh, this would be the main brick walk walking to the house that will that will we're asking for that to be brick. Next is to create a narrow brick walkway back from here back to that gate, and then this picture on the left is looking once you reach that gate looking to the backyard. Um, that walkway is existing, and the picture on the right is the continuation of that as you get as you go along the back. So the proposal here is just to um, 
actually not sure if it's to even broaden this, but to uh, elevate it, it is to broaden it, right? It's to, to broaden it um, slightly and to, to just have it so that it's not, the dirt is not getting on it because I think it's below ground at the moment. Okay. Um, and then the, all the way back, the plan is to just keep basically the existing path, but just broaden it and have it be level so it's usable. Um, and the one exception is the area that you see right here that I'm circling with the mouse, yep. that is gonna be expanded a little bit so that it's, it's kind of like, um, so when you come off of the deck here, um, that area, like basically where I'm circling here and to the shed, it will be a, a patio area. Okay. Um, and when you say broaden it, you're meaning make it wider. Wider. Than, than, okay. Yes. Um, and are there any areas that are brick or gravel today that you're taking away? Um, yeah. yeah. So the there's a middle. Um, you can actually see it in this picture. There, this area here, um, it's kind of a kind of like a pit stop on the way to this uh, the back part of the property where there's a kind of a square. Um, uh, there, there's some boxwoods with like a uh, brick mm -hmm. stepping area around them. So this middle part where it, it kind of spreads out and it has this really, actually really neat uh, circular brick design, we're actually simplifying that and I think taking that out, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because, and, and the reason I'm asking is there was a, and and you, I appreciate you going through all the the staff concerns and addressing pretty much all of them, but, um, you know, they, on, uh, I believe it's page three of five, you know, staff concern number two, built area to open space not provided, um, which we, we do typically see in applications, especially, you know, probably more relevant when you're adding considerably um, onto a house, you know, and enlarging it. We're in a little bit of a different circumstance with your project, but that's why I'm asking questions about yeah. the impervious surface. But, you know, staff did include the note, the design guidelines refer to not substanti substantially increasing the original built area so to open space. So um, we'll, we'll probably talk about that a little bit, but that's why I'm asking. Um, and then, um, so question about the the water feature, is that just existing to remain and it, it will be repaired or you all abandoning it or it, yeah. it'll be updated? So the, um, the, the proposal was to eliminate this water feature and to potentially add a new one. We're not adding a new one. And the proposal remains to remove this because it's non-functioning and it's mm -hmm. basically a mosquito nightmare in okay. the back. Okay. Um, That's helpful to know. I, it's a little, um, it, it, there's a lot of plant material and just material in general proposed on the, the site plan, which is the main thing I'm referring to. And I'm, so that's helpful, thank you. Sure. Um, so this would be completely like all the concrete pulled out, not just r filling it in and planting. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and per the um, arborist that we talked to, they said that that's better for this tree, which is the primary objective for us too. Okay. Any other? Questions? Yeah, I heard, I heard you say it, but I just want to um, confirm, or I think I heard. Did you say that some of the existing boxwoods are moving to a different part of your yard? Um, okay. Yes. Um, so some of the existing boxwoods were planning to move to the front. Okay. Um, I think they're, um, the, I think all those, where it says TB on this thing. In the in the very front, I see. Transplanted um, those are wood. all, I think, boxwoods that are gotcha. moving to the front. Okay, and those are coming from that more formal gathering area in the back. Okay. Um, either there or that middle section that I mentioned, where we're kind of reducing the brick. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, this it's really hard to sort of 
uh, interpret between these two. This, yeah, because this drawing is, it, um, I think, basically some of it shows existing, some of it does not. But there's a there's an area right here where there's a brick. Um, it's kind of a there's a circular brick design here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's surrounded by boxwoods, and I think mm -hmm. those are coming out, and those move will probably be the ones that move to the front, okay. or whatever we can, you know, protect and, um, sure. yeah, keep alive. Okay, that was it. <coughs> Further questions from the committee? All right, hearing none, uh, we'll close the evidentiary portion of the hearing. You have a seat. Thank you, and we'll move to committee discussion. Seems like a nice proposal. I think we had a lot of questions just mainly from not having the evidence of a new and exist a, a new and existing plan. Um, but I, I feel comfortable with what's proposed, generally speaking. I agree. Um, I guess maybe this is a question for staff. Um, how do we address the built area to open space calculation or the lack thereof? Is that, is that a fixable? Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at it as a, it, there is gonna be an increase, but it's a slight increase. It's just not that much. In general, I would just suggest if that's something you think you need to make your decision and make sure that it's congruous, you can request it. I wouldn't condition that. Um, if visibly it doesn't look to you like it's go going to be significant enough that you need to see numbers, then that's up to you. Yeah. And and I'm I'm helped, Jordan, by the the pond being removed because yeah. it it it's a structured pond, so you know. It's, technically impervious, um, so I, that helps. I think that gets me to not substantially increasing the bill area. Sure, yeah. It could potentially end up being less without having in, you know, very detailed drawings, because that's a lot of concrete, it looks like, in that picture. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the pond that's coming. Yes. Being, that's why I yeah. asked that question about is that being completely removed because that would yeah. looks like it uh, it's fairly large I'm I'm also okay with not having the first potential condition met of 25% lawn because you know if you visited this property it is very wooded as the applicant mentioned and you can just tell from mm -hmm. um, and there's be one thing if they were coming back with no plant material, but it's all, almost everything that's proposed is plant material. So that's, right. you know, it is, I, I see what the vision is. And I think it's mm -hmm. gonna be, um, you know, applicable to what the site is already. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Okay. Um, I guess the woodshed's kind of a, a remaining kind of outstanding. I mean, maybe it's not outstanding, but I have no idea what it's going to look like. I mean, I know what woodsheds look like. I could probably envision it in my head. Um, Imagining a little bit of a lean-to, mm -hmm. um, but not inherently part of the fence itself, even if it's tacked, scabbed onto the fence. I mean, I guess where I'm going with it, Jordan, they, if it's lower than the fence height and mm -hmm. it's scabbed onto it, it could later be removed. And, you know, it's barely a structure. Um, so, and serves a, you know, functional purpose to the yard and unlikely to be visible by anyone other than those within the interior of the backyard. So, yeah. Yeah. And is it, a shed because it says it's wood storage with a shed roof well, i guess that would be a question for the applicants but um yeah it doesn't yeah 
I mean, we can ask Wood storage. Them. Doesn't seem big enough to be what I would consider a shed, but really more just it could could just. I mean, we can we can ask the applicant, but I'm imagining a shed roof, yeah. you know, coming off of the the fence posts and just enough to keep wood dry. Yeah. So it's not an actual shed, is my interpretation. Shed shed roof, roof. to me implies that it's just right. like a, a sing, roof, singular not, direction. Yeah. yeah. That was also what I was interpreting it as. Um. Yeah, I. It seems it seems reasonable. It seems congruous. We don't we don't get a lot of landscape, purely landscape applications. So. I'm, There's no other objection. I'll make no. a motion. Go ahead. Um, uh, I move that based on the um, evidence presented in the application and the evidentiary hearing, hearing that we uh, approve the application with the following conditions. One, that no front yard plannings of a mature height greater than 42 inches and no screen plannings with, of a mature height greater than six feet tall be installed. Uh, two, that the rock aggregate be small to medium in size, angular, um, and jagged in shape and gray in color. Three, that the following materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to issuance of the blue placard uh, 3A keyed planning plan, identifying mature heights and ground cover. 3B, woodshed elevations, dimensions, and specifications. 3C, um, uh, omitted. Um, four, that the following uh, materials and specifications be submitted to and approved by staff prior to installation and construction, gravel specification and color, B, brick specification, color and size, uh, C, front and rear brick walk design specification, including pattern, uh, 4D, gravel walk specification and dimensions, 4E, metal and cobble edging and specifications, 4F, front and rear stepping stones, specifications and color, 4G, trellis materials, dimension and design, 4H, uh, the flex fence details, if not portable furniture, uh, for, uh, for I, specifications and color for any visible or above ground features um, of the, strain, the drainage system, for J, benches, seating, hammock posts, and fire pit specifications if they're not uh, portable furniture. All right, motions been made to approve the application subject to the stated conditions. Is there a second? Second. All right, without further discussion or debate, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. Uh, the application will be final after uh, next month's meeting when the minutes are approved and signed. So thank you very much for the work you've put into this application. Thanks. All right, I'll note that um, COA 6 2024 and COA 53 2024, both uh, or one Glenwood Avenue, 803 Glenwood Avenue, 601 Elm Street are deferred to next month's meeting. Any other um, business to come before the committee? No, please take some dessert. We have leftovers to share today. A special treat. Thank you. All right. Uh, with nothing further, I'll note this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.